Hey everybody, welcome to Living Power, your online Bible study where we are walking through the Bible in a year. It is great to see you today. I hope you are having a great day. And let me just start out today by reminding you of a very important truth that nothing is going to happen to you this day that you and the Lord together can't handle. So there's your encouragement for today. Um, I want to welcome Cleo, who is behind me. This is my little girl kitty. I have twins, and they've not been in the videos for a while. So um, she is um, right behind me. For those of you listening, she's on the couch. And I have a feeling that uh, our lesson today is going to end up putting her to sleep, but I hope it does not put you all to sleep. So let's go ahead and get started. We are covering Jeremiah today, chapters 19 and 20, and we also got to read the beginnings of the book of Daniel. Now, Daniel is a prophetic book. It is a historical book, and I love Daniel just as much as I love Revelation. And so Daniel and Revelation do sort of go together. So um, I know those books are very difficult for a lot of people, but once you understand it, they don't they're not difficult anymore so we're gonna I'm gonna give you an introduction at the end of the lesson today into the book of Daniel and tell you a little bit about him first thing though you know in the book of Jeremiah in our reading today we read about Jeremiah's shattered jar and then we read a uh, a whole chapter where he is complaining he's complaining to God and again we feel like a fly on the wall where we can hear this very private conversation between he and the Lord and what I wanted to do today in the lesson is cover three things explain a little bit about this uh, shattered jar why that was significant talk a little bit about um, what it means what it must have meant for Jeremiah to be a prophet of the Lord in this day and age, and let's just sort of identify with how difficult that would be. And then thirdly, we'll cover an introduction into Daniel. Now the theme of the potter, which is where Jeremiah 19 starts us off today, is where God has told him to go take a jar and to let it drop and to shatter it. And that is really an action sermon. God is telling the people of Judah something very, very important that is going to happen. He's doing it through his prophet Jeremiah. And what that means is that God oftentimes, if not always, uses the physical to describe and or give us a teaching, teach us about the spiritual. And here he was ch um, choosing to use a um, jar, which would have been pottery. Now, at the time that this was happening, at the East Gate in Jerusalem was where the potters actually worked. And this was their place of business, and they created pottery. And oftentimes in the making of pottery, you break by accident the pottery. And the East Gate is where the potters worked. And if they broke any pottery as they were making it, this is where they would throw the broken pottery out, and it would just kind of lay there. So think now, now that you know that, isn't it so appropriate and pertinent that God would use the uh, concept of a shattered clay jar that the people could understand, something physical, to help explain a deeper spiritual truth? Now, Topeth in Jeremiah 19.6 actually is a place, and it's, it's referred to in your lesson. You really won't understand what that means without the background. The definition of that word is a fire pit. It's a hearth, kind of like, um, think about in, in, when you go camping, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts with your family, and you'd, you would have a, a fire pit. Maybe you'd roast marshmallows over it or whatever, but it would be a hearth. Um, now, that's a nice uh, story to think about, you know, camping with your family. However, Topeth has a very negative connotation with it. This is where the children were put into the fire there in their worship of Molech, and we talked about that last week in one of the lessons. So um, God is going to use this place, the place where that uh, that. Uh, tragedy, travesty, really, we could say happened so many times for so long. This is the same place that God is going to bring in the Babylonians, and the siege is going to be so bad, God has ordained this place to be called 
a valley of slaughter. And when the Babylonians come in at this particular spot, again, it's just God's hand at work here. The siege is so bad, it's ended up given that name. Now, the smashed pot represents the nation of Judah, right? They are beyond discipline. They are beyond prayer. They have hardened their hearts against the Lord. And some of the commentaries that I read in, in studying for the lesson today just uh, couldn't emphasize that enough. And they kept repeating that, saying that, um, you know, why would God say to, I can't remember if it's today or in tomorrow's reading, but God will eventually tell Jeremiah, don't even pray for them. Don't even intercede. And that's not something you hear God say very often. So it's important that we understand uh, they're at the point of no return. Um, they are, like I said, beyond discipline, beyond prayer, and they are very, very hard, and it is um, the time of judgment for them. Now, you, you might not know this because this was new to me, but kings, when they would go to war back in the these days, it was symbolic of them to break a jar and shatter a jar because that was a way of kind of... Um, puffing out and beating on your chest and saying, I am going to defeat my enemies. And that was something that uh, was a symbol that people understood, and kings would do that as they were going to war. So in essence, God was saying to Judah, you are my enemy now. And I think that's a very important spiritual point that we need to, uh, we need to talk about because we oftentimes focus on the mercy and goodness and benevolence, uh, long-suffering patience, love of the Lord. And he is all of that, 100%. However, we being children of God, wanting to walk blameless before him, kind of try our best, right, to stay on that side of the line. However, there is a line, a very real line. And the people that do not walk in his ways, that harden their hearts against the Lord, the Bible calls them enemies of God. And in Psalms and in other places of Scripture, it talks about them as, as the wicked. And there really are these two camps in the world. And you, you, you are either a friend of God or you are an enemy of God. You can't be both. It's one or the other. And God was calling Judah here an enemy at this time. Jeremiah has preached this sermon twice. He's preached it at the Eastern Gate and he has preached it at the Temple. Notice that the theme of the potter, this action sermon that he's given, has resulted in him being beaten and put in stocks. So he is none too pleased. This takes us to the um, the complaint that he gives to the Lord. And you know, sometimes we can just um, we can just relate to Jeremiah, can't we? He is under severe persecution for doing exactly what the Lord told him to do. Why, why does it work that way sometimes? I mean, why do we feel like we get punished when we're serving the Lord? Well, it's a very real reality. And um, Jeremiah was arrested, beaten, thrown into stocks. He was, um, the stocks were actually located at the temple in a public place, which added to his embarrassment and his shame. And he actually remained an official prisoner until Nebuchadnezzar set him free. And we haven't read about that yet, but that's coming in Jeremiah chapter 39, starting with verse 11. God visited Jeremiah, which I think is just so sweet. You know, God doesn't always deliver us from trouble. He tells us we will have trouble in this life, but he always promises us his presence. And here he is visiting Jeremiah yet again. He has revealed that the king of Babylon will be the one to come in and uh, will bring this siege upon Jerusalem. And I wanted to point out in Jeremiah 20, verse 4, this is the first time in Scripture we see that it's Babylon. So I thought that was an interesting point. We know, we've been talking about it for some time because we have the benefit of history, but this is a, a very key verse, Jeremiah 24. You know, Jeremiah mentions Babylon 200 times in his book. So um, they are a formidable force that God is rising up and using to judge his people. Now, the Babylonian invasion, and this is kind of an introduction here to... Um, to Daniel. 
The Babylonian invasion actually takes place in three parts. We have not talked about those three parts yet. What we have said before is, I keep talking about 586, some scholars think it's 587 BC when Jerusalem comes in. That event doesn't actually happen until later in August in our Bibles. We won't be reading about that, but here are some historical dates that you really need to understand. The Babylonian invasion, these sieges that take place, take place over a number of years. And um, it actually took place over th three parts. The first part was in 605 BC. We talked about the Battle of Carchemish before. This was between Babylon and Egypt. They were battling for dominance of world power, and Israel's land was right in the middle of it. Babylon won. Pharaoh did not. And while they were there fighting, Babylon comes in and takes Jehoiakim, the king of Judah, the nobles, and uh, off, carts them all off, and some of the treasure in the temple takes them back to Babylon. You could consider this to be the first exile, but only the king and the nobles have to go this time. It's in 605 BC. Daniel was one of those nobles that was taken in this first round. He was probably a teenager at the time, very good-looking teenager. He comes from the princely line, so we can consider him a noble. And that was the thing about Babylon. They would come in and take the best, the brightest, the smartest, the um, best-looking, and they would educate them in the Babylonian ways, and they would indoctrinate them, really, into the, um, their culture and they only wanted the best and the brightest. Now, the second part took place in 597 B.C. where um, they came in and took 10,000 people. That was the huge exile. In 586 B.C., which is the date that I kind of have memorized in my mind, that's when the temple was burned, the city was burned, and left for ruin. So the date that we're looking at, Nebuchadnezzar's reign was from 604 to 562 BC. That was the span of time that we're talking about here. And um, Daniel was highly educated. He eventually, in Babylon, he was there, I think he was there 60 plus years. And in one commentary it said he lived to be um, Let's see, he lived to be maybe 85, and another commentary said he, he might have even lived to be 100 years old. So he lived a very long time. And he, actual, he actually, um, I, when I was reading about him, it reminded me of Joseph. So if you go back and read about him, you're going to read about him today and tomorrow. See if his story doesn't remind you a little bit about Joseph being. Remember, Joseph was taken to Egypt, and he was imprisoned, and uh, he eventually rose to be the most powerful man in all of the land under Pharaoh. Daniel did too, and he, he eventually became a wise man, considered to be a wise man, because he interpreted dreams and visions. Remember that Joseph did the same thing for Pharaoh, and Daniel became a high government official, and Daniel remained faithful to God even in this strange culture. And that is one of the things that we're going to be studying as we talk about the life of Daniel. I hope I haven't said David. I mean Daniel. Um, he has just remained faithful to God and he is uh, such a wonderful uh, persona to study. How do you remain faithful in this type of culture? So I want to leave you with this, um, this thought here. You know, 605 B.C., which is the time that Daniel is taken in with the other nobles, uh, the first exile, if you will, to Babylon. It's mentioned in Luke 21, verse 24, Jesus talks about this period as the beginning of the time of the Gentiles. And that's not a term that I've made up. You can look that up in, in the book of Luke, and it actually talks about the time. It, it says that phrase, the time of the Gentiles. So we are living in what's called the time of the Gentiles, which began with this first exile in 605 B.C., and it will continue until Jesus' second coming. Now, here's the application for today. We saw a little bit about the despair of Jeremiah. 
living a righteous life, doing exactly what God wanted him to do. But um, he's a sensitive man. He's just like us. And God's calling has caused him pain. And God's calling has caused him despair. I think we can learn from Jeremiah's life and certainly as we study Daniel and how he was able to remain faithful even amidst the persecution that he is going to face. They both take their concerns to God. They let it all out and they share their feelings, their raw feelings with the Lord and we're invited to do the same. And the second thing they do is they don't quit. That's the reminder for us today. I think that is what God wants us to hear today. Whatever it is you're feeling, you just, you just don't have to quit. When times are getting tough, God doesn't want us to quit. There is always an opportunity to do some sort of work for the Lord. And I think the third thing that we can learn from Jeremiah's life and his complaint before the Lord today is that we can be empowered by the Holy Spirit to keep going, to not quit, and to remain faithful, to remain faithful to the Lord in whatever He has for us in the midst of any amount of persecution. Well, that is all the time we have today. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. Tomorrow we're going to continue and we're going to read about the fiery furnace. And if you remember... Um, uh, not Daniel in the lion's den. It's not that story. It's the fiery furnace with um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And that is in your reading tomorrow. We're going to talk about that tomorrow. So, blessings to you. I've got to quit. Until we meet again, I'll see you tomorrow. Shalom.